fun subject to paint. The people are dressed in medieval clothes at Fort Latte in um, Brittany in France and they just work so well. So if you're scared of people just give this a go and you'll find it much much easier than you think. A little bit of time with the drawing as always. Uh, you can trace or you can scale up and there's lots of ways of doing that to make things easier. Right, I'm just going to use a little bit of cobalt blue I'm going to take that straight over that castle. Because we're going to have just a hint of the castle in the background. I've taken the castle from a different view. They're actually walking away from it. But I think, again, it's relevant. The castle was there. It's part of what was going on. And Let's just bring that down. Nice big brush so that you can get those washes on quickly. You want to keep all this very neutral and in the distance. And then the C starts there, but I'm going to just drop it down a little bit. And I'm going to use just some thicker cobalt blue and just run that through there. And I'm working very quickly because I want a very loose background. This is all very complicated and you, know, you don't want them to be fighting with the background. Now, I think the raw sienna is a lovely sunny colour to use. It was a sort of unmade path. If you're a bit scared about getting these washes made up quickly, then just make them up beforehand and then you can just go for them very quickly, uh, whatever you find the easiest. Bigger brush as possible, all makes it for ease. And what I'm going to do is just take out some of the colour there to keep that quite light, which gives me more contrast in a minute. And I'm going to go back in with the blue here. So the blue and the raw sienna mixed together. Just takes that into the distance a little bit. Add a little bit of neat raw sienna here and there. It just sort of varies it, breaks it up a little bit. That will blend in quite nicely. And then we've just got this greenery. So a really good green colour, I find, is the Prussian blue. Mix it with a little bit of sepia and some yellow, lemon yellow. And that sort of comes around there. It will blend in a little bit, that's great. And then we have the same sort of thing here. I think that cloak is red, so that will be really nice up against that. Let's just work this very quickly. white we want but that's quite nice and then just thicker paint underneath because you've got that sort of dark bit that gets a bit of shadow underneath and then some raw sienna because there's sort of grass and things coming up here All right, I think we'll start with this guy and just work our way through I do one person at a time because that will make it easier for you although if I was painting it just for myself I would put all the wishy-washy stages on to start with, then I'd go in with the darks. But we, we do each figure at a time. Now there's some lovely colours going on here. He's got this lovely blue around his neck. That's... And 
done and that's all fades out in a minute let's just add some more water always more water for lights more pigment for darks so just pull that out that gets you a really lovely effect um i'm gonna add a little bit of cobalt blue um cobalt, a little bit of light red into the cobalt blue to give myself a gray which is sort of around there and if that bleeds that just adds to the movement we're very happy to have lots and lots of movement and i think that blue comes down a little bit further but we can paint over that with some of the it's some sort of pipe that he's using now i think we'll go for an intense violet for the shadow in the gray because that will make it a bit interesting and so just pop that down there just squint if you're not sure where they are some very definite darks here shapes around there that would be much darker underneath but we'll go back into that in a minute some of that is grey, it's in shadow. If you want it a little bit lighter, more water, just pull that out a little bit. And more pigment if you want it darker. So a nice dark sleeve underneath there. A bit of dark in there. Oh, now these whites are just brilliant, aren't they? very dark there. White just shows up so much with shadows and colour. Oh, it's looking great already. Right, let's do a skin tone. Light red with a little bit of sepia. We can mix up plenty so that we can use it for all our faces as we go through. Touch a sepia into that so that it's not too red. And just and those hands. Yeah, I'm I'm happy with this. What colour should we do his trousers? Light red, I think, would be very good. And then he's got red there. So that's more an alizarine crimson at the top. So nice and thick. It's quite dark. And let's get that shape sort of there. And then that will give that shape. And I think there's a little bit there. It's difficult to tell. And then the light red. Nice and thick they're quite sort of dark in places so it's darker there it's quite dark there we can go even darker in a minute there and then some of that is lighter so just tick off your paint and with your clear water just pull that down and we'll just do the same that side for the moment and there are some very darks to go in but that will be when we've got this dry. It's quite light at the bottom. Take that in. Oh, well, that's very light around there too. Catch the drips with the end of the brush because it's quite upright. And the shoes, I think a little bit burnt umber. Again, the light's hitting it here. That's quite light and that. And then we can use the same burnt on the very water down. There, the light's really hitting on top to so try and keep that white. And there's another bag here which I'm going to do in burnt on, but it's a bit dirty, but that's fine. Um, I don't want to do it the same colour as this because that would just make it a little bit sort of blending and we'd wonder what it is. Now I'm going for some sepia. Just work very quickly to keep it loose. And that can be a little bit darker there. And then I'm going to mix some Prussian glue into the sepia for his hat and some of the bagpipes. So that hat sort of it's a bit of a curve. It comes down like that. Amazing. 
amazing hats, aren't they? There we've got that. And there's another one that comes there. And I'm thinking just here, through his hands. And down there. And we've also got a bag there. I think that's more a sepia bag. It's a bit of sort of watered down sepia. I just don't want it to be the same colour as his trousers. Um, what colour should we do the bagpipe? Should we keep them the colour they are, the raw sienna? Because the raw sienna isn't touching this and it's up there with the blues and the greens. So some thickish raw sienna because that's quite strong. And it comes down like that. And that sort of goes right underneath there. And into that I'm going to put a tiny bit of sepia just to sort of bleed around. Actually, that's quite big. Okay, now it's quite important that we get that really dry before we do the dark parts. And what we do next is going to make it three dimensional. And I just love this. So let's get that sole in there. That's a very thick, rich sepia. And get the shape of that pointed shoe. So he's lifting his foot up. And a bit of dark underneath that one. And some dark around here. And to the top of that shoe there. So I'm just looking at where the darks are, just popping those in. Right, what's the sepia's on our brush? We've got a little bit of shape around here, just dry brush marks. It's quite dark down to there. Um, a little bit of hair wouldn't hurt to put in. We could have run that in to start with, but I wasn't quick enough. Now I'm going to go in with some Prussian blue because we've got a lovely dark here in the crinkles of his jumper. And then underneath is a dark. And I'm squinting. There's quite a lot of darks. Um, into the cobalt blue, I think. Some blue ones here. And there. And it just, I love this. It just makes so much difference. Now a little bit of alizarin crimson with a dark patch there. Just underneath. And I think that same alizarin crimson, I'm going to put the darker shapes into the trousers. Now there's a shadow under there. And they're sort of folds, they're quite big. Just pop those shapes in. And then just down that side. It's quite dark there. Oh, that's really coming together. Now a little bit of sepia and a bit of definite shape here. It's quite dark underneath that bag. And a little bit of dark shadow on the sort of bagpipe thing. Just touch the sepia for the fingers, just the end of the brush. It's like it's a bit of indication of what he's doing. Well, I think a bit of a mouth just there. We don't really need much more than that. I think we could overdo it if we did. Um, just now a little bit of intense violet, just for a few definite shapes on here that are darker, much darker. Much darker underneath here. Up to. So nice and thick to get it dark. Um, dark there. There. Yeah, I'd say that he's done. Right, now we'll leave him and we'll do this one. So let's start with the light red, the skin tone that we've already mixed up. Now he's got a bit of a beard. Let's just get that hand in. And 
I think with a little bit of the French, the Prussian blue and the sepia, let's just bleed that in. It doesn't have to be too definite, but yeah, that just, that gives that, that bit of shape. Now he's got bright yellow trousers on, let's do them bright yellow. So cadmium yellow, try and get it clean. I always seem to dip so much else into my paints. And try brush marks, wow. I just love the colours of these. And there's a bag that's sort of there. And it gets darker as we come down. Let's add a little bit of Prussian blue into that just to darken it. There's a bit of shadow there from the knee. That's quite dark. And then anything more definite can go in a little bit later. I think we'll stay with the mauve for the shadows on his shirt. So the intense violet. And see how quickly this comes on. Dark shapes there. It's quite dark there. And there if there's anything on here that's too white, so just wash that out. We can go with some of the darker shapes in a minute. And yeah, and then a little bit thicker because that's a soft so we're getting dark mark there. Oh, I think the bag we put in whilst that's quite damp, so I'm going to go for a burnt sienna. I just want it all to be quite loose. Tie that in there, and then the strap we can do afterwards. So yeah, coming on quite nicely. I think the shoe can also be that colour. Let that run, that's all good. A little bit lighter on top, just pull that out. Wow! Now he's got this lovely dark cloak that has got to be Russian blue and sepia mixed together very thick. Now I'm going to hit just a tiny bit on the shoulders with a little bit of added water, and then the rest I'm going to have very dark. So the light's sort of catching that a little bit there and here. We always darken anything if we need to and there's a bit of the light catching there now the rest i'm going to keep really dark so with dry brush marks oh that is so beautiful and gungy just bring that down isn't that perfect so satisfying Just lovely and thick. And that little bit there. I think it just comes alive when we do this. And the hat is the same sort of colour. Let's pull that round. It's very dark underneath, we can darken that in a minute when that dries a little bit. So yeah, that is just coming on beautifully. And the bagpipes are also that colour, the main bag. I'm a bit worried because I think they might blend in if I do that. I'm going to add some alizarin crimson to my mix. So it's just slightly different. And add a little bit more water too. So it's a sort of a dark purple. It's always, I think they're just going to blend into the coat and that can come around there. And then the pipes coming off of it are a raw sienna. So we won't think of shadow at the moment, we just pop in the shapes of those pipes like that. Nice thick gungy paint. That's that one there. Yep, that's all the pipes I can see. So again, get this dry, then we can put the dark shapes in. Isn't it surprising how quickly this is coming on? Right, let's start with the sepia again. I'll just pop in the sole. Of... Actually, I love that when the soles are up. It's... I only managed to get a few photographs and they're gone, but... Dark there. And that... A little bit of shape. 
don't want to do too much. There's a, something coming down that just adds to it. And I think maybe we'll put a little bit of sepia down here just to make it more definite. Um, I don't think we want too much on here. There's a little shape there that might not hurt to go in. Um, and I'll dip that green into my lemon yellow. Or my cadmium yellow, sorry. And let's get a definite sort of shape. Just squinting. I think maybe we need a little bit of a mouth on him too. So just some sepia. And let's just pop that in. Maybe one eye. Don't overdo it. Um, some of the fingers. It gives us an idea where the hands are going. So that's on just the tip of the brush. And the same there. A little bit of mauve, I notice this little dark shape here that wouldn't hurt to put in. And that comes down there. And that comes around there like that. It's a bit of a collar. No, we don't want to overdo it, that could be the danger. Yeah, I'd say he was done. So we can always add something later if we need to. Do you think that probably should be a bit darker? Up a bit higher for that shoulder shape. There we go. Right, let's do this little figure. Now he's got mo trousers on. He's got a white shirt. So let's go for a cobalt blue with some light red for the shadow on his shirt. And most of that is in shadow there. That shows up that arm. You see you're using one thing against the next. Um, he's got a tambourine, which we can pop in in a minute. And that's quite dark, but that side is lighter. Okay. Now his cape is a beige colour. Yeah, let's use that. So raw sienna, that will show up against that nicely. Put some darks in in a minute. And let's go for the skin tone, which we've already mixed. So nice and easy. Some of that out, I don't want it that dark, it's, it probably won't dry. Okay, and the same for the skin tone for the hand, there's only one hand showing. The tambourine, mm, got to be careful. I don't want it to look like the white of the shirt and I don't want it to look like that. So we're going to have to go for another grey. Um, let's add a little bit of alizarin crimson into the intense violet, which will make it more burgundy. There we go. And then we have a little bit of raw sienna. But and the darks can go in in a minute and uh, now intense violet for his trousers nice and thick just gungy lines lights hitting it this side a little bit so more water pull that down and just very thick intense violet there just showing that leg a little bit because it is hidden. I think you can just see his shoe coming down there. And we use some burnt umber for the shoe. So there, and then we have another one. But I've just moved it over slightly. And then our dark Prussian blue and sepia. A sort of string tied around there. I'll just run that in so that that's extra dark just here. And he's got that lovely dark hat, 
Prussian blue sepia, really good mix. Let's pop that round from that. And then take that up, might leave a little band there. Not too much of one, but it's a bit of dark there. And then his shoulder comes over there. Dark, that's quite nice. These colours really work with each other. And then the dark of that shows up. 